and my results are I see all the light that's inside you see 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 a river that's flowing the in in grace Noel, Noel. hi everybody welcome back to unexplainable grace my name is Enrica and thank you so much for tuning back in and coming through to the channel. Thank you so much for all of you who are joined the Unexplainable Grace family. And if you're new to the channel, praise God, praise God for you coming. And I thank God that you are watching this right now and that you are getting a little piece of God's Unexplainable Grace through this video. And I pray that you feel led at the end to join the family as well. God bless you. Okay, before we jump into the video, let's just pray. God, I thank you so much for who you are. Lord, I thank you for your grace that cannot be explained. Hallelujah. I thank you for a fresh outpouring of it every single day. I thank you for fresh mercies every single day, dear Jesus. And I thank you for second, third, 14th, 15th, thousands, 2,000 chances, Lord, that you give us each day we have breath, we have hope. Each day we have breath, we have another chance to repent. We have another chance to say yes to the Holy Spirit. We have another chance to draw nigh unto you dear God and I pray that through this video through this communion that I'm having with my brother and my sister on the other side of the screen right now that your Holy Spirit would come down that your Holy Spirit would meet us oh God and that you would just be in our conversation you will be in our communication dear Lord be in the comment section father be in the other videos God be in the future videos to come cover this person cover their life cover their family cover their children God cover their job cover their finances Jesus just be with them God bring them closer to you oh Lord give them a desire to seek after you and for who you are and not just what you can do for them I thank you Lord for all your grace and all your mercy and thank you for your son Jesus Christ in Jesus name I pray amen hallelujah welcome back to unexplainable grace as you see by the title of the video um, my herpes results are in mm. Um, so this is coming from my testimony. If you are not aware of my testimony, God healed me of herpes in 2013. And I highly encourage you to go and check out my testimony video. You can see it linked below. It's linked below in all of my different videos. So go and watch my testimony. And I praise God so much for what he's done in my life and just setting me free and making my body whole. But most of all, making my soul whole and our relationship redeemed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, in since doing that, there were a lot of different responses to my testimony video. And in that video, I never um, made any kind of claim that anybody should believe me. I never made it about me because it truly isn't about me. God does everything for His glory, His glory alone. So, um, God pulling me to share that with the whole world was for his glory and to point every single viewer back to him. Um, so it was never a matter of, oh, ah, this has happened in my life and I need you to believe me and this is why you should believe me. Like I was not making a case. I was saying what God did in my life because he told me to tell you, hallelujah. And and that's what I did. And it, it, it caused so many different responses and there's been so much fruit from it. God has allowed me to connect with people all over the world. I've met so many people I've heard, um, well, virtually, I've heard so many of your stories. I've gotten to pray with you. I've gotten to have deep conversation with you. And I thank God for how he's ministering to every person that has viewed that, that testimony. Hallelujah. Um, and uh, one of the questions that I have received quite often from that video, not from everybody that's viewed it, there are people who have viewed it and they're like, oh my gosh, praise God for what he's done, praise Jesus, he's so good, I believe he's a healer, I, I pray he can heal me. And then there are a few people that, you know, are just like unbelieving and like, yeah, right, you're a liar, you're this, you're blasphemous. Eh. And then there's people who are like, yeah, okay, amen, I believe, but do you have results? Did you get retested? And then there's people like, I mean, I'm not gonna believe until I see your results and if you got tested, and I wanna know that. So um, I just wanna tell some backstory to that. So before I put that my testimony video out in October, 
Um, I, first of all, had no idea that that was going to happen. <laughs> In the video, I talked about how I attended a conference and I had no idea that God was going to have me share my testimony there at this conference. It was a small, intimate conference, but it still was a room full of strangers that I had no idea things were going to get this intimate, this deep, and this raw, and this serious. But that was the way that the Holy Spirit was moving, and He started to press on me and press on me and, and tell me I need to share, tell me I had to open my mouth, tell me I had to speak the work that God has done because my testimony doesn't belong to me, it belongs to God. It's His glory. And, and how dare I sit on the light? How dare I hide the lamp under a bush um, that he's done and placed in my life? And I was so nervous, but I was so convicted at the same time to share my testimony. In fact, anytime, even before that public sharing, whenever he had me to share with people in my life, I was always, it was always never something that was planned. Like I, I shared um, in the beginning, you know, when, when God did this work in my life, my plan was to take it to the grave. Like I was not trying to tell anybody, you know, I was just like, okay, God, thank you so much. You're so good. Like I praise you. My life is just like, it is just everything is for you. And I'm just so grateful and I'm so thankful. Um, but I'm not telling anybody, you know, this is, this is going to be between me and you. I'm going to die and go to heaven and everything's going to be good, you know? But in, um, at the end of 2013, he had me to tell the very first person who was my best friend, at, um, who is still my best friend now, my sister in Christ, uh, Lydia. And he, he pressed it on my heart and it was so clear. And the Holy Spirit was just telling me, you need to confess, you need to put your testimony in the light. Because when you put your testimony in the light, the last little bit that the enemy had in my life concerning that area of my life was shame. Because I was keeping it a secret. And if I, if I, if I continue to have shame, I continue to keep it a secret and the enemy continues to shame me concerning it because we don't things that we share we are not shameful about you know but the things we are shameful about we hide and we keep in secret and that shame is a bondage from the devil and anything that's kept in the dark causes that shame and he continues to have a chain in my life and God was like it's time to break that last chain concerning those herpes it's time to break that shame it's time to put it in the light and share with your sister in Christ and I sat there in silence for like 20 minutes straight like I was just crying and she's just like it's okay like I was like I have to tell you something God is telling me to tell you something I have to tell you and I don't know how to tell you like I was just crying because nobody knew I had dealt with it by myself for that whole two years two and a half two years um but then the testimony part like almost a year um before sharing and God had me to share and when I shared and released finally and told her the story of my life and what God had done it was just this breakthrough I just I just felt that shame just leave and I just felt so light and I was like wow God is so good and I just wanted to tell my other friend and I did the next day I called up my other close friend and I was like oh my gosh sis, I have to tell you something what God has done in my life like this is my testimony this is why I you know this is how I gave my life to Christ so anyway that's the little bit of the backstory of me never wanting to share even after I shared like I never I didn't carry the shame but it still is personal it's still very sensitive you know so whenever the Holy Spirit would say I need you to share with this person or I need you to share with this small group of people these group of friends I was never ready I never knew when the Holy Spirit was gonna have but I knew when he told me and every time he had me to share there was breakthrough and there was a reason he wanted me to share in that space because something then happened in the space um, and there was breakthrough that occurred and every single time so when he had me share at that conference, it was the same thing. And then he said, I now I need you to tell the world. I need you to tell the internet. There's people that are in my family that still don't know my testimony. Like this was not something that I knew was going to happen and that I did on my own, but it was God and I had to be obedient. And I'm glad that I was. But I say all that to say, before I posted it, I was telling the Lord, well, okay, so I guess I have to 
you know, I gotta get some, I gotta get tested. Like, I gotta get test results. You know, I can't just put this on the internet without having the full package. I want to give everybody the pretty package that they would have expected, even though I had lived my life the five years at that point, five and a half years, walking in my healing, so free, not even thinking about um, that I needed test results or anything like that. I was just in Jesus, and I know what God has done in my life, but when it came time to putting it out there before the world, I knew the questions that people would have, and I was just like, well, I just want to give them everything and give them what they need in order to um, see the work that God has done in my life. So it's not like it's something that I didn't think about, but when I said that to God, God was like, you need to post this video in X amount of days. Like God put me on a deadline and a timeline. And I was just like, wow, okay. The Holy Spirit was like, you're not, no, you're gonna post the video when I tell you to post it. You're not gonna wait to go get these results because to be quite honest with you guys, if you watch my Purpose Over Paycheck video, you know that I know I have left my full-time job as God led me to leave and to move and everything like that. And I have yet to, to start working full-time and it's gonna be almost a year um, in June. So I'm, I haven't been in position, you know, to have a full benefits package with insurance to go to the doctor and, and do all this stuff, you know, to provide this. And had I waited on my timeline saying, no, I need to get these results because people are going to want it and not put out the video, the video still wouldn't be out. We wouldn't even be having this conversation because I still have not worked full time. Like I have not been in position. And if God was putting that press on my heart to do it, he would provide and position me. But it hasn't been a priority for the Lord in my life. Um, but it's something that when people ask me, I'm like, oh, well, and I do, I tell my story. If you haven't heard my testing history, after I got healed, the Holy Spirit did tell me to go get tested two weeks afterwards and I was nervous but I was like okay um, I knew it was just like a test of my faith if you really believe that I did this then you will go 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 and get tested and I went to the clinic and I made my appointment and I went and I was just I was just like resting in God resting in the work that he did because he's the one that told me he was healing me while he was healing me um, and just trusting and believing in it and I went to the doctor and the doctor looked at me and I told them what I want to get tested for they tested me for the other stuff and I told them I want to get tested for herpes and they were like um you, you, we don't test you for herpes if you don't have symptoms and I was like well I want to get tested you know and the doctor was like well have you been diagnosed before and I was like yeah but God has healed me and I want to get tested and that lady was like if you don't have symptoms we're not testing you and if you got diagnosed with it then that means you have it long forever for your whole life and I was just like there's nothing I could do. They said that I, I can't get tested without symptoms. And that was just what I was told. So that was my understanding. So I never went back to get tested since then. And I was just like living free. I walked out that place smiling because I knew that I passed the test that God gave me. I did not stay home. You know, I didn't get tested because the doctor didn't want to test me. It wasn't because I stayed home out of fear. Like I walked in faith. I believed what God did and I felt so good. So now fast forward to me posting the testimony and um, God telling me to post it before getting test results. And then when people ask me, me sharing that with them, my testing history that I just shared, and but then finding out that I can get tested through blood, like people were telling me that, I was like, okay, well, you know, when I get a doctor and everything, then um, that's gonna happen. I'm gonna get tested and you know, I'll share the results. And that's that was something that I spoke in my belief and in my true like goodwill believing that by now I would be in a position to be able to do that um, and it just it hasn't happened you know it, it has not happened and that's why this video I was like oh my test my herpes results are I don't have any <laughs> I don't have any guys and and that's just where I'm at right now and I just want to personally apologize because somebody commented and um, said like you know well uh, we're 
you know, well, when you go and get those results, please make sure you share because we're waiting. And when they said that they're waiting, I'm just like, okay, so there's people out there, like they have an expectation of me, like you need to do this and we're waiting for the day that you do type of thing. And I believe that I created that expectation because I told people, you know, when, when I do, like I'm gonna let you know and I'll tell you there's no big deal, there's no problem. Um, but that's my fault. I spoke ahead of God. I spoke ahead of what God may have wanted for me and this testimony. You know, there's a lot going on in my life right now. God has had me pick up and move again to a whole new state, a whole new city. And there's a lot of just seeking God and his will for my life and, and, and walking and being where he wants me to be and doing what he wants me to do. And that's just not a priority right now. It's just really not a priority. I'm living free. I know what God has done in my life. And for those of you who that is a, re a high priority point for you, um, in order for you to believe, I just have to say that that's between you and God. Like, that doesn't have anything to do with me. You know, my message was never for anybody to believe me, but to search the scriptures, to seek God for yourself, and to believe God that he is good, that he is holy, that he is uh, all-powerful God and can do anything, that there's nothing impossible to him. So test God, you know what I'm saying? Like, he'll prove himself to you. Um, so that's my bad for giving that expectation because honestly, I don't know if God is going to have me get retested. I don't know when that's going to happen. And if it does happen, I don't know if he's going to have me to share it publicly. Maybe he wants my life and my testimony to be the demonstration that doesn't come with a piece of paper attached to it. So people aren't putting their hope and faith in man and their test, but they're putting their hope and faith in him. Like maybe he wants it to just be between me and him. Like maybe I'm I'm not going to I don't know maybe I will and I will share you know however God leads me I really don't know what his plan is for this testimony and continuing it on but I just want to hop on here and share that with you guys that currently there there are no results to share <laughs> and I don't know if there will be if there will if there is then you'll know you know and if there's not then there's not um, but trust in Jesus and seek him. And if you don't believe, then that's between you and God. You know, my part was to be obedient and share what God has done in my life. And I'm not going to take on any extra burden than that. And you know, if, if God's not making something a priority in my life right now, and he's prioritizing other things, then I need to be okay with that. <laughs> and I can't stress myself. Not that I was stressing myself, but... I can't add anything on um, and force myself in to do things that God isn't opening the doors for me to do. So that's what I got for you guys today. I just wanted to share that with you um, based on that comment that I got and just kind of, I feel free to just, just share that and let y'all know uh, as a follow up to my testimony. If you desire to have hope as you're waiting, you're seeking God to heal you, you're waiting for him to heal you, then you can sign up for my hope letters that I send out. I aim to send out weekly and they're messages of hope as God gives me revelation to share with you through his word, prayer for hope. Um, not only just hope for healing, but hope in life. And I, I pray that for those of you who are signed up for the hope letters, that they are ministering to you and that they are helping you believe Christ for just who he is. And I pray also for those who are seeking God just for his hand and just for what he can do because I get that vibe from some of you as well that you desire you you found out that God can heal you and now you're fixated on it now you're obsessed with it now yes he needs to heal me when is he going to heal me how come he's not healing me yet what's going on what what's going on with this timeline God what are you doing you need to heal me you need to heal me why won't he heal me and it's just bro or sis i really pray for you right now i really really pray for you right now i pray that god will just do a miraculous work in your mind and remove that pedestal of pride out of your life and kick you off of it in jesus name i pray that god will humble you to your knees and that you will see that you are a sinner 
You are born into sin. You sin willingly against God. You didn't even think of God when you were in your sin. And now that you see that God can move in such a miraculous way, you've placed him on your calendar, you've placed him on your timeline, and you're telling him what he needs to do and when he needs to do it. And you're telling him that his goodness is based on what he does and what he doesn't do in your life. And right now, I pray that God removes that pride out of your life and that you get down on your knees and you repent. You don't repent just because you want healing. You don't repent just because you want God in your life. You repent because you're a sinner who sinned against a holy God. God doesn't have to do anything for us. He doesn't have to do anything. But he does because he loves us. And the greatest thing that he did was get on that cross for us. Was die for our sin. So how dare we? How dare we try to treat God like he's a genie, like he's at our service? Because that's not it, my friend. That's not it. God is holy. God is good. God is gracious. And you should serve him and pray to him because he's God because he loves you, because he died for your sin and he desires to heal you from your sin, to heal you from your brokenness, to heal you from the weight of all the pain and the guilt and the shame that you carry in your life, to redeem your mind from perversion, from violence, from anger, from selfishness, from jealousy. God wants to renew you in so many areas and I pray to God that he rips the veil that's in front of your eyes and you stop making this life about you. In Jesus' mighty name. I thank God for you. I thank God that you've tuned again, in again for another episode at Unexplainable Grace because his grace really is unexplainable. It truly is. And I apologize again for giving you the expectation of telling you when these results were going to be in and that I'd be sharing them and all these things. All I can do is what God tells me to do in this life. God bless you. And remember, continue in his unexplainable grace. Bye. I see all the light that's inside you. See.